Hey, David Taub here, co-creator of Next Level Guitar. What's up, good people? Hope all is well. Hey, today I have part one of a three-part series on uh, for the beginners out there on getting your chord changing to the next level, getting to that point where you can be more efficient with your changing chord changing so you could play popular songs. You know, every guitar player when they're first starting goes through the challenges of trying to change chords, and it's difficult, but man, if you stay positive and you follow these techniques that I'm going to teach you and I'm going to give you some exercises and some techniques across the series of three beginner lessons. It is going to help you tenfold. I would not steer you wrong, good people. Oh, and if you want five free lessons that are not on YouTube that are going to take your playing even further and work on your strumming and rhythm and tons of other stuff and, 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 and more exercises and whatnot, five free lessons that aren't on YouTube and an ebook that I put together that has ton of packed good information and lessons on diagrams and chord shapes and all kinds of great stuff. Click on that link below and you're going to get five free lessons we'll send you, not on YouTube and a free ebook all from Next Level Guitar. So make sure you click on that. And I'm going to show you some chords and then we're going to use those chords as examples to practice these techniques of cluster, what I call clustering, keeping your hand in a certain shape or cluster when you're changing chords. So there's three big things that you have to keep in mind when you're fingering chords and changing chords and voicings and working on your chords. One is don't let your fret hand come apart. As soon as you take it apart like this, you're going to be in trouble and you're not going to get to the next change in time. And also don't come off the fretboard far. A lot of times students when they're first starting out, and I'll show you this up close, what they do is when they go from one chord to another, they take their hand and instead of leaving it in this tight cluster in a way I'm going to show you, they take it apart and then try to put it back together for the next chord. There's a better way to do it. Or they'll take their hand and they'll come vertically away from the fretboard. You want to glide your fingers on the strings, almost not allow any distance. You can't even get a credit card between the strings and your fingers. Keep that in mind as well as get on your fingertips, not flat. That's a, a way that a lot of students are getting a lot of dead strings ringing because their fingers are flattened and they're not up on their fingertips. Okay, so follow these techniques I'm going to show you now and then after you're done with this lesson go to the le second lesson and the third lesson and then get that five part series that's not on YouTube by clicking on that link and man you're going to see some big differences. So the chords that we're going to be using for this example are E minor and I'll just get my other two fingers out of the way. Basically, you have your first and second finger on the second fret of the A string and the D string. So, and then the other chord we're going to use for this example is A suspended second. You just drop that E minor down one string each. That's what that chord sounds like. You can see it written out in text. Basically, I have my first finger on the second fret of the D string, second finger on the second fret of the G string. Open B, open high E and open A. And if you can, get that thumb up to just touch the low E string to mute it. You should be on your fingertips. Not flat like this, not lazy. On the fingertips. Here's that E minor chord. Notice also my third finger and fourth finger are attached. The pinky is hitching a ride with that third finger. That's very important. You don't want to be like this. Have them tucked in tight in this, what I'm calling a cluster. Okay. Same thing when you go down to that Aces 2. Notice the technique is the same. If I go to another chord, like we're not going to work on a D chord, but or a minor chord, but notice my pinky is always tucked against that third finger and I'm on my fingertips. All right. Those are very, very critical. Now, two things you absolutely do not want to do when you're changing chords. One is you do not want to, when you go from one chord, let's say we're going to go from this E minor to Aces 2. You do not want to do this and pull your hand away from the guitar and open it up out of the cluster. You want to stay in a nice tight cluster no matter what chord you're going to. Students make the mistake of going apart and then they have to get their hand back together again. No matter what chord you're going to, I want you to keep that cluster in tight and do not come this way. Do not come away from the fretboard. The move is down. You're either sliding down or up or basically using the strings as a guide. Pretend your fingers are magnetically attracted to the strings 
and you are not coming off of them and you're not coming apart and your third finger and fourth finger are not separated and they're not flapping out here in tight this is going to save you so much trouble down the road and if you notice if i go through some other chords my technique is the same no matter what chord i'm on i'm not coming this way and my hand is not coming apart no matter what i'm doing right now that you're in this position what we're going to do is we're going to just go and a good exercise to practice this remember we're working your muscle memory too is you're going to come off the chord and then you're just going to try to get your fingers right back on the same chord. So you're going to play the chord with one strum, then you're going to come off it, then try to put your fingers exactly back on where they were. Notice I'm not doing this, coming off it, coming apart, and then going back on. Same cluster. And then you can do that with other chords you're working on, like the Aces 2. Notice I'm coming off the chord and then right back on. If you know some other chords, like a D chord. Off, on. Now, I've been playing a very long time. I make this look easy. For the beginners, it's not. But practice just coming off the notes. And when I say off, I don't mean off like out here. I mean off just like a, milli, a couple millimeters, a couple centimeters off the string. And then see if you can get your fingers right back on. Same chord. If you want to kill the strings, even better. This way you can make sure you get all of them. No matter, let's say if you know the C chord. Notice a technique. Pinky attached to the third finger on the fingertips. Thumbs muting the low E string. Right back, off, on. All your chords. You can download that ebook, learn some more chords, and practice this. This is a great exercise. All right, so that's one exercise that you should be doing five minutes a day off and on keeping in this cluster is so important no matter what chord you're going to see how nice and tight that is and I'm sliding up and down I'm not going this way and I'm not coming apart and then when you get good at that try just changing from E minor to Asus 2 E minor Asus 2 notice the change I'm not doing this nor am I doing this coming out this way. I'm just dropping straight down and I'm muting that low E string on the Aces too. A suspended second. Okay? Learn this strum pattern. So let's get a strum pattern that's going to be very easy, especially if you're just a drop dead beginner, but yet sounds a little bit more musical than just one, two, three, four, two, two. Straight quarter notes, right? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do an easy strum pattern using all down strokes. And the pattern's gonna be down, 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 down. Okay? Real easy to do, and I'll break it up and write it up for you on the screen. So think of it like down, one down, 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 then two downs. So you have down, 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 and then three downs, down, down, down. And those little rests you're putting in there is what we're gonna keep repeating, and that's what gives music its life's blood, this repeated series of rests, as opposed to straight eight notes, one and two and three and four and, see, that's not very musical sounding, right? So let's try the strum, it'll sound like this, if I just hold the strings, down, 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 down. Try to play along with me. Play along with me, I'll play it for a minute because sometimes it really helps when you have another person to lock into it first. Two, three, four, down, 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 down. Good, excellent. That's a cool little strum pattern. Um, that's going to help you make this sound a little bit more musical. So if I do that E minor and then try to drop that straight down to that A suspended second. Two measures each one, each chord. Down, 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 down. E minor. You're making music. Is it life grand? A sus two.
just that just that cluster if you know some other chords maybe go from E minor to D or E minor to A major thing right now is to really keep that hand in that cluster position and not pulling it away from the strings and opening it up so important so remember practice that on the chord then take your hand off the chord slightly but leaving it in that same cluster and then getting right back on in that same position and cluster and you'll be surprised how much that's going to help you and get those fingers trained this is part one be sure to tune into part two of this lesson and also click on that link below get your five free videos that you won't find on youtube and your free written pdf book which will have all the chord shapes diagrammed out and fretboard diagrams and uh you know chord changing tips and exercise it's a great little pdf book check that out and uh, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on that subscribe button. And uh, I'm David Taub, co-creator of NextLevelGuitar.com. Stay with it. You can do it. Stay positive. Tune into part two to this lesson, and uh, we will see you soon.